Hello there. Sometimes, as Star Trek fans, in the Star Trek universe, we get a little bit of tunnel vision. Always wanting the story to progress forwards, always wanting to jump further and further ahead. And really, sometimes it's interesting to look backwards. Not time travel, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff, no. Just what came before. It's one of the things that worked well for Enterprise, at least in principle seeing how everything began, or at least began-ish. But going further back, it's one of the things we don't often explore. And occasionally, when we do, it's always interesting and always fascinating to see what exactly was prowling around the galaxy long before humanity. And today we're looking at the Promelian Battlecruiser, a starship built by a species that were building interstellar vessels at a time when humanity had only just mastered the mechanical clock and we were still bobbing around the oceans in sail ships and we thought that flying meant you were a demon. So let's look at the Promelian Battlecruiser and what we know about it. This fascinating vessel is a fairly well-known ship. We can assume that although not exactly a common ship, as it's centuries old, built up to and during the 14th century at least by the race which are known as the Promelians, which we can assume are now an extinct race or presumed to be an extinct race. The battlecruiser was constructed for them during a war that they had fought long ago. It was still in living memory because many of the member races, for example, within the Federation were around back then, such as the Vulcans, and were spacefaring and warp capable and possibly had contact with this species. Humans, even in the 24th century, had models and replicas of these ships. Captain Picard, who had a fascination as a child of ships in a bottle, had a Promelian battlecruiser as a ship in a bottle as a child. So, again, they weren't completely unknown, but the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D finding an intact example in 2366 near to the remains of the planet Aurelius IV was considered miraculous. This vessel was perfectly preserved. Although, of course, it was run out of power and been adrift for a thousand years, it was still perfectly preserved. With the crew, as Commander Worf would point out, they died at their stations. They died with honor. This vessel was first and foremost a battle cruiser. although we don't know the tactical disposition of the vessel. For example, we don't know what kind of shields, if any, that it had. We don't know what kind of weapons it carried. There are certain things we can presume. It, Although Picard had an idea in his head that right, vessels from this time period, which I think was no offense to the great Captain Picard, I think Picard looking at it through the lens of history and from a human perspective. And this always kind of bugged me, it's kind of narrow, that just because the ship is from a thousand years in the past doesn't make it primitive, it just makes it old. Bear in mind there are races millions of years older than humanity, races that were prowling the galaxy and exploring the galaxy when humans hadn't even evolved. Just because they were that far back in the past didn't mean that anything they did was clumsy or badly designed. Picard was surprised at the elegance and simplicity and functionality of their bridge layout. For example, it had a dedicated communication station, dedicated tactical station, a captain's chair in the middle of the bridge, and you could have been mistaken to believe that you were walking onto the bridge of a Federation ship. That's how well designed it was, but there's no reason to assume it wouldn't be. This was a, te a technologically sophisticated spacefaring race who are far older than humans. We don't know how long they've been spacefaring or how old their culture was. The vessel was impressive for its time, I assume, compared to other ships, but we still don't know exactly what it was capable of. Although it's never stated that the vessel was capable of warp drive, I'm going to have to go out on a limb here, correct me in the comments if you would like, it'd have to have been. They weren't native to that star system. so. How did it got there if it didn't have some form of superluminal propulsion? I'm not saying it had to be warp. There are other options. We do know that the vessel was powered by nuclear fusion drives. These would have been a much more advanced version than what we have now and could have provided huge amounts of power, potentially enough 
to power a warp drive of some description, even if it was only, say, warp 1 or warp 2 capable. The vessel itself, though, based on size and capabilities, it was a battlecruiser, it was a combat ship, and was roughly comparable in size to a galaxy-class starship. It had a basically wedge-shaped hull design, but with swept-down wings at the rear of the ship, with a large command module built atop of the rear section of the vessel. Again, we don't know what kind of weapons it carried. Were they lasers, plasma weapons, railguns, phasers, disruptors? Did they have missile systems, photon torpedoes, or something else entirely? We simply, again, don't know. But we can assume that the Enterprise took pretty detailed scans of the ship and probably downloaded, as we know, they downloaded much of the database. So we probably know, but that information is all locked away in memory alpha somewhere. The Promelians themselves built the ship to defend themselves and their territory against their enemies, something they apparently did well, but not so well as their race no longer exists. In terms of physicality, they were humanoid. They had sort of a darker skin tone. They had a crescent-like crest that ran down the center of their heads. And linguistically, the Universal Translator could look onto their language, so they were a compatible species with other Alpha Quadrant powers of the 24th century, and that the UT could actually lock onto, translate, and convert their language a thousand years after it had stopped being spoken. Overall, a very impressive ship, not just for its time period, because when we say that from the time period, we're mostly referring to from an Earth standpoint. This race could have had space frame capability for 10,000 years before the ship was built, is all I'm saying. We don't know. And we're also only presuming that their race are genuinely extinct. It's sort of alluded to, but we don't, again, 100% know that for a fact. Though the ship encountered by the Enterprise in 2366 was possibly the single most intact version of one of these ships ever discovered, it wasn't the only version of this ship ever discovered. Or because, as I said, Picard had had models of this thing, people had seen them before, there were probably relics, debris, bits and pieces left over elsewhere, crashed examples, who knows. Maybe even a few of them still floating about in somebody else's hands. But this ship seemed to be the most intact and pristine version so, we can say that these people, for their time, really knew how to build. Because this ship was still functional a thousand years later. It seemed to use some kind of crystal-based data storage technology, which is definitely simplistic and primitive by 24th century standards. So, there is an element of progression of technology unilaterally across species. I understand this, because technology progresses in one re by one race, they share it with others, and it evolves. So even though, yes, this race was spacefaring a long time before humans, they still had less advanced technology than what Starfleet would have in the 24th century. But, nonetheless, again, we should remember, this race were building starships when humans were building sail ships. And... That's something to say for this race. So, what do we think of the Promelian battlecruiser and the Promelians as a whole? We don't know much about them culturally. From the captain's logs, they didn't seem to be an overtly aggressive or violent species. They certainly had a standing military and standing army, but that doesn't mean that they're an inherently violent people. It just means that they had a military branch of their society, much like humanity does. So, can't judge them for that. But, let me know in the comments below what you think about this ship, and do you think it was actually warp capable or not? Or it used some other form of propulsion? And if you have any theories as to what that might be, put it in the comments below. And, with all that said, we are at the end of this episode. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. I'd just like to say a thank you to everyone for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoy making these. If you did enjoy it, please consider giving a like, share, and a subscribe, and maybe checking out the other videos on the screen right now. And in the description box below, there are links to my other social media accounts.